Hey everybody, so as I mentioned before, um, I work at the Hui Ho'olana Retreat Center on Molokai right now, and um, I totally spaced it and forgot to give you guys a tour of the property. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now, because it's a really cool place and I really would like to share it with you guys. Um, so I guess first we have this neat look, nifty gate. Oh, there's Sam! Sam is a black dog that was probably abused, but they took her in um, here. Oh, and we have a car that's coming, so you'll get to see how the fence works. <laughs> so they push the button, and the gate just opens like that. That was perfect, that was perfect timing. And they just drive right through. So that's, oh, good morning. <laughs> and here comes Sam. And she's probably gonna go hang out, lay in the sun, she really likes to do that. But, um, so this building right here, this is the Taj. And it is the workshop. And I think somebody's. I think somebody's in here right now. Hey, Eric. Going? Good. This is Eric. He does all the machine stuff. What are you working on? Fiber optic. Hey, dog. Internet, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Perfect. That's Ricky. <laughs> and these are his dogs, so when they show up, you know, he's around someplace. So, okay, so now we will move on out of here. There's Sam again. And this part is where I like to live. Uh, this this is the nursery. Um, this is where we keep all of the like endangered species and other Hawaiian native plants. Uh, I'm not really gonna go through a bunch about the nursery right now, just because I'm gonna do another video that covers like a lot of stuff that we have in the nursery. And here's the heavy heavy machinery that a lot of people use. Uh, and where we throw all the stuff that needs to like either go away or turn into compost. I don't really know what they do with it. But all right, let's move on. So yeah, today is, today's my day off, which is really nice. So I just decided to let my hair down. And oh, and there's Bindi. This place is full of dogs. Bindi is a very small whippet. <laughs> Um, and that's Bronwyn's dog. And usually whenever you see Bindi, Bronwyn's close by. So, any visitor would see this as they come in, because, um, they drive to the lodge where we have orientation, um, the first night. And, um, we also give, uh, lays to the guests. And, oh, let's hit this. Oh, this is the one orchid. We have one vanda underneath the staghorn fern. There's the vanda. Doing pretty well. Probably, probably want some more light, but that's okay. This is the garden. Um, it's outlined in rosemary and tea leaf plants and some other stuff. And here's a stephanotis. Um, but we'll just take a quick peek in here because I want to do... Um, another video with Kimo uh, and have him say everything. But this is a nice brief overview that uh, we'll, 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 we'll save the other stuff for later. <laughs> and so we're continuing to walk. There's a smart car. I have no idea whose smart car that is, but yeah, it's here. And this is the 
uh, Peace Pavilion. This is where I dance because it has a has a sound system in that back room. Uh, so I like to hula here. It's a really great venue for hula. And this is also where we have staff meetings. So it's kind of cozy, very nice. Uh, and what else do we do here? I guess have parties. So other people do yoga. And God, today has been such a nice day because it had been raining like all night and for a good part of the morning. And there's the view. Oh, I need to point out these plants because I'll probably never talk about them again. So these are Kauai green swords. Um, they're related to the silver swords on Haleakala, but they're just such a weird, crazy plant. Somehow they got incorporated into the landscape as kind of like, I don't know, a rare plant initiative. This is one of the cooler rare plants on the island. So these, these, these plants will like only, uh, they will only grow for years and years and years, and then as soon as they flower, they die. So it's kind of, kind of sad, but they produce like thousands of seeds, so you should be able to culture them readily again. And then also there's that native prochardia, that native palm, you can see it's that lime green fan leaf. Um, they're all over and doing very well. So this is the lodge. Uh, this is where some of the guests stay and where we have um, meals. And this is the kitchen. I'm not going to go into the kitchen right now just because you'll see that in a later video. Um, this is where we put all the trash and recycling, hanging bananas. And this is where we do the wash. Very important. Um, usually, we only like usually I only do my laundry either when the guests are here because when they leave, we do all the bedding and everything. Well, I don't, but Doreen and Arlinka do. And then this is Arlinka's studio. She does a lot of um, prints. Like these are probably her prayer flags that she made or bought. I don't know. But Arlinka's a fabulous artist and this is the staff lounge aka the gecko because there are lots of geckos in here uh the mural was done by one of the volunteers too which is kind of cool it's really fun and then we have this is our basic setup so this is where we go and hang out and chill and eat breakfast and kind of just hang out with one another So moving through, this is kind of more of the ornamental landscape. It's not very, it's not native at all, but well, the tea leaves are not really native, but they're, uh, I think, a new plant. And this is the pool. Just come down, show you guys the pool. Yeah, it's very nice. So this is a good place to kind of come and sit. I, so we also have these um, bathtubs like around the property. This is, this is the one that a lot of people like to use. This is the one that I love using. Um, and usually I bathe at night, but um, it's underneath this big aloe tree. But yeah, the baths are really nice. Um, we have like Epsom salts and stuff. So like if you have sore muscles, you can just kind of soak in the tub. And a nice little hammock if you want to rest. I've only ever used it once. Hammocks really aren't my thing, considering like I get eaten alive by mosquitoes all the time. And oh, here's the um, here are the other showers under the cycad. So you have um, shower, bathroom, and another outdoor tub, which is really great, and a place to brush your teeth. Hi. And then here's the lodge. Um, hula lessons. So we always take our shoes off before we go in. 
here's what the inside of the lodge looks like. Oh, bright light. <laughs> Um, so, guests and ourselves will eat dinner in here sometimes. Um, last night I got a fire going in the fireplace because it was really cold and very rainy. But, yeah, fireplace is pretty cool. And we have this amazing couch bed thing. You can sit three people on it comfortably, or it's even better if it's just by yourself. Um, we have little pianos, or not piano, I don't, I don't know what you'd call it, keyboard, something, but this is a spot that I kind of like to hang out, because you have good internet and you can do stuff, <laughs> so it's pretty cool, um, yeah, like if you want to watch YouTube videos, that's a decent spot, because the internet's kind of, it's, it's going to be way better, like, in a few weeks, but, um, yeah, that's, that's where I go to do um, like all my stuff. This is a really great place to eat. A lot of the staff will eat here. Uh, this is just a very nice little couch. Very comfortable. It's very sprawly. Uh, and you can see the lanai. So like on really good weather days, uh, people eat out here. And there's also little like yeah like from here you can see like this big wetland like all the way in the center of the screen that big dark spot and then to the right of that now that's in the middle of the screen is the shrimp farm that I used to work at so I can see all that from right here which is really awesome and there's a hill with a hole in it um, and then I so the view is like pretty pretty awesome from here but here's the rest oh that's the gong it gets rung for dinner and yeah so the lanai just kind of wraps around and then it wraps around to this little secret spot where you can take another bath yeah and there's loud minor birds so we will mosey on a little bit further. Um, yeah, the face is so beautiful right now. It's so very breezy. Probably here. This is the closing. Clo God, I can't even speak. The clothing line or the clothesline. Clothesline. Yes. That's where we hang all of our stuff because all the energy, mo most of the electrical energy, uh, in the or on Molokai is uh, diesel. So we like to hang all the clothes because you don't have to pay for it. We only do, like, we only do the laundry, um, we only do the laundry like a few times, but we always, we always put it out unless it's raining because if it's raining, then we just throw it in the dryer and that's like the most energy um, I don't, I don't know, energy insufficient machine here at the Hui. So I'm walking down, we're walking through this iron woods, or through these iron woods, and this is a total, totally like, non-native forest. Uh, where we're going, there's some cabins over there, you probably can't see them, but we'll, we'll see them when, um, we go up that trail. This is the lower shower house, another place to take showers and go to the bathroom and things like that. Hello. Okay. So, got some sinks. That's cool. I, I, I've never, I've never been over here actually. I don't even know what this is. Oh, so this is where you can get your shower. Cool. Wow, that's, that's neat. I really enjoy that. I, I, I've never even gone to the bathroom over here. What am I doing? And here's another place where you can enjoy a bath. Nice hot bath. Um, so water is, I think, solar. And sometimes it's not solar, so it can be cold. And... Um, yeah, so, so sometimes there's a backup. So I'm coming further down. Oh, there's a 
there's a workshop in progress right now, so if that's the yurt we're not going to go in. Um, I, I can take you to the yurt maybe a little bit later and then just kind of like, I don't know, figure it out. But that's the yurt, that's um, right now, right now there's a painting workshop and we're not allowed to go in there because they're painting stuff, which is fine. Oh, okay, so we'll just turn up this trail. And this is one of the cabins where the guests stay or don't stay. Uh, oh, and here's one of these cool, like, irises. So cool. Yeah, we have, I don't know if these are, I don't know what kind of irises those are, but we have um, Siberian, ah, oh, web, oh my god, um, we have um, South African irises that are really cool, that are, I don't know, they just don't look like your typical iris, but so now, yeah, here's, here's the other cabin, um, or there's one that has like a little ledge with a view. Here's another one. And there's a smashed egg fruit. So sad. This is the egg fruit tree. It's really cool. Um, I can't even explain the, the taste of it, but they make a really awesome chocolate egg fruit ganache. They put it on like cakes and things. It's really cool. Um, but so where we're walking through now is, I don't know what you'd call it, I guess you'd call it like the orchard. So like we're walking under some like mango and some, these are custard apple. Yeah. Custard apples and some avocados. Uh, that I think is a... Oh, this is a macadamia nut, and here you can see the macadamia flowers. Um, but that one right, right in the back, right there, I think this is a lychee or a lychee or however you want to say it, because I've heard it said so many ways. Um, but it doesn't really produce a lot of fruit for some reason. And I heard that you have to like kind of stress the tree out. So like whether that means like um, partially girdling the um, stem of the branches that you want to fruit or whatever. Uh, here's another little cabin. So yeah, and that will apparently like induce fruiting, but I, I don't know, I've never grown them before. Uh, yeah. So we're just walking through this. And hopefully we'll get to something awesome soon. Oh, up there is where all of our citrus are. We can, we can go up this little path. So this this tree, oh my god, this tree is great. Like it has the best oranges I've ever had in my life on it. And oranges in Hawaii kind of suck because they're always picked very underripe. And uh, I don't know, they just taste like crap. And even the ones that grow here, they're always picked underripe. And I don't know. But th this tree, this tree is amazing. And over here we have a grapefruit. And I guess we can go up this way, it'll be more fun. Um, this is like a very nice, like grassy area. Get really good phone service over here. I, I, I don't think I've had very many calls dropped over in this section. Uh, here's a lodge from another angle. I'll just go around, sell trees, and I'll head this way. There's some guavas and some fig. like here are some figs. I think there are some guavas behind it, that tall tree is a guava. And these are figs. Um, some fruit going on them. I think if they're producing fruit that means that they're self-compatible. Usually they require a fig wasp to do the pollination, but that's a nice that they don't really in Hawaii because um, I think the cultivars are self-compatible. Um, this is a lime tree with a liliquoi growing all over it and liliquoi is amazing. It's a really good fruit. Um, 
Let's see if we can see. There's a lime flower. Is that your lime? And then there's a lime right there. And there's, there's a group of... Oh, and here's some little koi. And these will turn yellow eventually, and then you just cut them in half and eat the inside out with a spoon. It's really great. Um, and here's a, a larger prochardia. I got a larger palm, the native palm. And this is, uh, I don't remember what the name of this is. I think it's Koa, the Koa cabin. And they also have a bathtub right to the right of that palm tree. I'm not going to go up there because I think that's where the, I think that's where the, the people stay that are giving the workshop, the teachers. Um, oh, yeah, so here's Prochardia um, fruits. And these, you can like drill little holes in them and string them up and make a really cool um, lolu palm lay, um, which my boss did, and that was really awesome. Really like that. Um, and this is the native planting, which you've already seen. Um, so we've basically just gone in a big, giant circle. Um, but it's so cool. Like, and the contrast between this that's coming up and the forest that's over there it's just unbelievable like I understand this is younger and there's not a lot of deadwood in it yet but like the amount of deadwood that's out there versus what's here and I don't know it's just like really lush um, and it's like you have so many different kinds of greens whereas like there you have like two which is like Formosa and Koa and Christmas berry and eucalyptus and they're all kind of like the same shade oh and here you can see I this used to be all mud, but um, we mulched it and got it all nice, I guess. It's just really squishy. <laughs> it's not a very good mulch because most of it's like coconut fiber, so it kind of squishes them. Oh, and here's a Vicky Vicky. Um, these flowers are edible. I, I ate them in like my first video here, but I'm not going to eat these because a Vicky Vicky is also endangered. So it's really good for us to have seeds. Um, yeah, it's really cool. They were probably bird pollinated when birds were like super prolific on the island, but um, yeah, since there are no forest birds that are, because these flowers are actually like really tough. Um, they're very, like it's even hard for me to see, like there's the pollen and I just think I broke the plant, but there's the pollen and like it was tough for me to even even do that so um, a lot of the native insects probably can do it uh, and they do have like quite a bit of nectar this is my cabin